Hello and welcome to one more video. Well, so in this problem, we are um, we're supposed to find out the elements of a particular subgroup H of the group G. So you see that G over here is a symmetric group. Symmetric group. So the symmetric group is of four elements, which means that we are interested in looking at now, all the permutations of the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? And, uh, but there is a, there is a, there is a little um, condition over here. The condition is that the subgroup is generated by alpha. Uh, the alpha, as you can see, is uh, mentioned here, right? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 3, 4, 1. So, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 1. So it's, it's, it's kind of a cycle, four cycle, which is given over here. And we need to find the subgroup H, which is generated by alpha. So these little angle brackets here mean that this is generated, generated by alpha. And by definition, H is a cyclic group. Correct? All right. Now uh, we are uh, also supposed to find, uh, determine, the left cosets of H in G. Uh, now, the coset, left coset of H in G would mean to find out the sets P multiplied by H, right? So, where P is an element of the symmetric group S4, the permutation group S4, and H is the subgroup that we have defined here. So, it, it, it's, it's kind of an overwhelming problem, but we'll get to the bottom of it. So, let's start with it, right? Okay, so let's look at, let's first try to investigate what alpha squared is. So alpha, again, let's reiterate, 1 goes to 2, so we write 2 below 1. 2 goes to 3, so we write 3 below 2. And then 3 goes to 4, so we write 4 below 3. And 4 goes to 1, so we write 1 below 4. So this is alpha. Now we, we are interested in finding out what is alpha square, alpha to the power 3, alpha to the power 4, and so on, till we reach... Um, the identity element. Now, we must also identify that the identity element is given by E, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3, and 4 goes to 4. So, it would, it would somewhat look like a two-row two, uh, two uh, row, um, uh, kind of a ma matrix with four columns, uh, such that each row has got exactly the same elements right so it's it's not a row and column matrix kind of a structure but just for the sake of your understanding we can look at it in that way uh, okay so let's let's try to find out what alpha square is so alpha square is 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 goes to 1 multiplied by or composed with one more permutation like this 1 2 2 goes to 3 3 goes to 4 and 4 goes to 1 Right, okay. Now, let's see uh, how we can get to the bottom of this, right? So, let's follow the red arrow over here. 1 goes to 2 in the first bracket, and in the second bracket, 2 goes to 3. So, basically, 1 should go to 3 after the composition of these two um, operations, right? Or these two permutations, correct? Okay, let's now see where 2 goes. So 2 goes to 3 in the first permutation and 3 goes to 4 in the second permutation. So 2 should go to 4. Fantastic. All right. So let's now look at where 3 goes. So 3 goes to 4 in the first permutation and um, 4 goes to 1 in the second permutation. So 3 goes to 1 in the resultant alpha square permutation. And finally, 4 goes to 1 in the first permutation in the first permutation and 1 goes to 2 in the second permutation. So essentially 4 goes to 2 in the product alpha square. So this is alpha square. In alpha square, 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 4, 3 goes to 1, and 4 goes to 2. So we kind of have a, a, a new permutation now. All right, let's move on and try to find out what alpha to the power 3 is. Right, so alpha to the power 3 is alpha square multiplied by alpha. So let's write down alpha square 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2. And that composed with 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 1. All right. Now let's try to find out what this permutation, what this resultant permutation is. So you see that 1 goes to 3 in alpha square 
and 3 goes to 4 in alpha, I mean, second uh, permutation that we had considered, right? So 1 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4. So finally, 1 is changed to 4. Well, in the second uh, element, 2, um, when, when we consider the second element 2, 2 goes to 4 in the first permutation and 4 goes to 1 in the second permutation. So essentially, 2 goes to 1, right? Okay. Now let's look at the 3, the element 3. So 3, uh, where is 3? 3 goes to 1 in the first permutation and 1 goes to 2 in the second permutation. So 3 basically goes to 2. Fantastic. Now let's uh, investigate what happens with the element 4. The element 4 goes to 2 in the first permutation, which is alpha square, and 2 goes to 3, as if you follow the sky blue arrow, in the second second um, permutation, which is basically our alpha. So basic, so we, we do have 4, which goes to 3, and that completes the computation of alpha to the power 3 in our equation over here. All right, we have still not reached the identity element. So we go, um, we, we go a few couple of more steps ahead and try to see when we will, when we would possibly find out that particular element of uh, the identity element. So as you see, as you know, that alpha to the power four can be written as alpha to the power three multiplied by alpha. Okay. So uh, well, uh, let me let me also say that alpha squared is al al alpha to the power three is alpha multiplied by alpha. Right, so okay, alpha to the power four is alpha cube multiplied by alpha. Alpha to the power three is one, four, two, one, three goes to two, and four goes to three. Right, so this is by the previous calculation that we had done. And alpha in alpha one goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to four, and four goes to one. Right, all right, so let's uh, try to identify what our resultant permutation will be when we multiply or compose these two permutations. So let's look at where 1 goes according to alpha to the power 3. According to alpha to the power 3, 1 goes to 4. And when alpha to the power 3 is multiplied by alpha, you see that the 4, the element 4 in alpha goes to 1. If you follow the red arrows, you'll see that I'm writing with red that 1 goes to 1 as a resultant. Okay, that's a good sign. Uh, looks like we are near to the identity element, but we should not stop right away here. We should actually go through all the elements, all the four elements and try to identify what is happening. Okay, let's see what happens with 2. So 2 goes to 1 in alpha to the power 3 in the first permutation. In the second permutation, 1 goes to 2. And the, what, what is the second permutation? The second permutation is actually alpha. So 2 goes to 1 in alpha to the power 3, 1 goes to 2 in alpha. So in alpha to the power 4, the element 2 is carried to 2, right? So that, that gives us that 2 is a fixed point here. There is no change in 2 when we apply alpha to the power 4, right? Okay, that's the good news. We have reached 50% with our 2 hour, you know, final uh, element of this particular group, subgroup H. Okay, let's see what happens with 3. So when alpha to the power 3 is considered, 3 is taken to 2, right? As you can see in the previous line as well, right? So, but then 3 goes to 2 when we apply alpha 3 times. And when we apply alpha the fourth time, 2 goes to 3, correct? So ultimately, as a composition of alpha to the power 3 and alpha, 3 goes to 3 and 3 is a fixed point. Okay, let's move on. To the last element 4. Let's see if 4 goes to 4 or not. I mean, it, I, I, can, I can really see it, but let's explicitly show it on the screen, right? So 4 goes to 3 in alpha to the power 3, and 3 goes to 4 on alpha. So yeah, yippee, 4 goes to 4, correct, amazing. So that is our identity element. So therefore, therefore, H, the subgroup H contains elements E, which is the uh, identity element, it contains alpha, the given permutation, it contains alpha square, it contains alpha to the power 3, but alpha to the power 4 is equal to the identity element, so we do not need to really write it again explicitly, right? But if we are interested in writing down the permutations, we may as well go ahead. So E is 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 
right? And uh, as far as I remember, uh, E alpha is 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4, 1, right? And alpha squared, alpha squared. Let's scroll up a little bit and let's find out what is alpha squared. Alpha squared is 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2, right? So it is 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2, correct? And finally, alpha to the power 3 is alpha to the power 3 is 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3. Okay, maybe you know it would be better if we write it this way 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you can pause this video, go back again, and try to identify exactly what the elements are. So this, therefore, H is equal to this is the required is the required subgroup subgroup of G is equal to symmetric group of order uh, on 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 four elements symmetric group of or, or symmetric group on four elements. Remember, uh, just for your kind information, that S four contains how many elements? S four contains four factorial elements in total, right? So because S four is the group containing all the possible uh, permutations of four elements, right? So this should contain 4p0 number of elements, which is equal to four factorial number of elements. All right. So <clears throat> uh, not 4p0, pardon me, it is 4p4, right? 4p4 out of four elements, arrange four elements out of four elements, that is four factorial. So this G, this H, as we have defined, is the required subgroup uh, of G, which is, uh, you know, that is generated by, that is generated, generated by alpha that is given. Okay, now we are done with the first part of the problem, and it's time that we move our focus to understand the second part of the problem, which is determining the left cosets of H in G. Okay, so let's now move on and try to find out what are the left cosets of H. So uh, before doing that, let's write down our H once more time. So H is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the first column, first uh, row, right, and 2, 3, 4, 1 in the second row, uh, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 in the first row, you will need to scroll it a little bit to find out what the second row was. Yes, the second row was, oops, the second row was uh, 3, 4, 1, 2. Correct. So 3, 4, 1, 2. 3, 4, 1, 2. And the third element, 1, 2, 3, 4. That should be 4, 1, 2, 3. Let's scroll it up and confirm it. Yes, no, 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 no. Uh, that's not how it looks like. Okay. Uh, 4, 1, 2, 3. Yes, 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 that's right. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is the identity element which is uh, present in any subgroup, correct? Now, we want to find out the cos cosets, the left cosets of H. Let, first of all, let's consider P to be an element. Um, okay, so before, you know, like uh, before finding out what are the uh, cosets, maybe, you know, we can find out how many cosets are there, right? So, the number of cosets, the number of cosets, number of cosets by, can be found out by using the uh, Lagrange's theorem, right? So, the number of cosets is going to be equal to the order of the group G divided by the order of subgroup subgroup h right okay this is by let, let me let me just you know like bubble it up here that this is following from the lagrange's theorem the lagrange's theorem okay now the order of the group g is 4 factorial as we had mentioned a little little while back right it's 4 factorial and the order of the subgroup h is 4 that's the number of elements that we have seen a uh, little while back so 4 factorial is 24 divided by 4 that will give us 6 
So, therefore, the number of left cosets, the number of left cosets, therefore, number of left left cosets is equal to 6. Now, this, my friends, is some part of the answer. Uh, the question actually had demanded to find out the determine the uh, determine all the left cosets of h in g right so uh, we are not very sure whether it is asking for exact left cosets or not but if it is finding if it is asking to find out the exact left cosets of h in g it's going to be a pretty lengthy solution so we'll maybe you know create a different video for that but as of now in this video we have learned what how to find the subgroup generated by a particular permutation and how to find out the number of left cosets of that particular subgroup in the complete group G. Okay, thanks for watching.